My name is Geraldine Newton-Cross and I'm the Strategy Manager for Bioenergy here at ETI. Deployed effectively, um, we believe bioenergy could um, help secure UK energy supplies, it could mitigate climate change and it could create significant green growth opportunities. Specifically, we believe that it could play two important uh, roles. One is delivering negative emissions when you combine biomass with carbon capture and storage and the second is actually just as a low carbon energy pathway to power heat and liquid fuels. you're effectively withdrawing CO2 from the atmosphere as the biomass grows, and then you're capturing uh, the CO2 as it's released when it's combusted and, and locking it away. So it means more is withdrawn from the atmosphere than is, is released back into it. So that net difference is what we mean by negative emissions, because it, it kind of stays below the zero. The combination of biomass with, with CCS is a, is a way of facilitating an accelerated removal of CO2 from the atmosphere, which is obviously what we want from a climate change point of view, we want to reduce the amount of CO2. So one of the ways we, we try and quantify the value of bioenergy is um, looking at or identifying opportunity costs. If you're building a UK energy system um, out to 2050 that meets our energy demands and it meets our greenhouse gas emission reduction targets, you look to see what the most cost effective way of building that system is. Our modelling has suggested that bioenergy has a, an opportunity cost of 90 billion um, per year um, from the year 2050. So that means if you were trying to build that energy system without using bioenergy, it would cost an additional 90 billion to, to explore the next most cost effective way of meeting your energy demands and your, your GHG emission targets. So the ETI's bioenergy value chain model is a comprehensive and flexible toolkit that enables us to assess how the UK bioenergy sector might develop um, over the next five decades. It was designed to inform um, our views around the question, what is a good way or effective way of delivering a particular bioenergy outcome? And by that I mean a certain amount of energy or electricity or, or heat or fuels. And we uh, use the model to look at how you would do that, taking into account um, several things, such as the amount of available biomass resource, um, the geography and climate of the UK, time itself, and both technology options that might be available and logistics networks. Bioenergy value chain model is a tool um, and it's a modelling tool so it doesn't give us an answer or the answers. Instead we use it to draw insight by doing hundreds of runs. Through those runs we look for patterns that evolve in terms of resources that might be grown and, and used, um, technologies that might be de deployed. One of the key things it's reinforced to us is that biomass in combination with carbon capture and storage is one of the only credible ways of delivering um, the scale of negative emissions that we need in the, the UK energy system. It's also uh, highlighted there's a preference for biomass to be converted to power or hydrogen um, when you're really trying to maximise the carbon savings uh, relative to fossil fuels. But it has highlighted an important um, early role for bioheat. Um, so biomass being converted to heat uh, where there's a demand is a really good thing and it could actually act as a stimulus for um, UK production of biomass. It also highlighted that gasification is a key technology to enabling the development of the bioenergy sector and this is largely because it's one of the most cost-effective, flexible, scalable and efficient technologies that's currently being developed. We've also gained insights into the optimal combinations of feedstock and conversion technology where you're looking to utilise carbon capture and storage. The modelling insights we've, we've gained using the BVCM enables us to identify uh, those optimal combinations using, for example, short rotation coppice willow in gasification to hydrogen. 